Hey guys, it's Randy with Low Buck LS here, and uh, today we're gonna try fire up the, the old 383 uh, crate engine uh, in this suburban that I uh, picked up in the last video. Um, yeah, it's uh, been sitting for quite a while. I've got a uh, fresh battery here, some starting fluid, some gas. We're gonna drain a little bit of oil out of the uh, oil pan, make sure there's no water in there. But from what I can see, actually, let me open up, the, I'll flip the camera around here and show you guys a few things. So I found this tag in the Suburban, which looks like this was basically a brand new crate engine. Date on it, where is it here? It says July 18th, 2002. And it's got like the warranty card and stuff. So I think they put a brand new crate engine in this thing. Unfortunately, it sat for quite a while with uh, the hood off and the carburetor open, but it might not be in that bad of shape. Um, pull the spark plug out. It looks brand new, like it's never been fired. Um, let me reach, reach the dipstick. Nope, that's not the dipstick, there it is dipstick oil looks like it's right out of the jug like it's never been ran and then if you go around and look at the exhaust you can't see very good but there's no soot or anything in the exhaust so. It might mean that they've just put a new exhaust on and put new plugs in it. But from the looks of that oil, I'd almost say we've got a brand new crate engine here that this may even be the first start on it. So um, first thing we're gonna do is take our drain pan there and I'm gonna crawl under the truck and drain a bit of oil out of it. And if any water has gotten in through the carburetor, um, because water is heavier than oil, it should go right to the bottom. So we're gonna go pull the drain plug, drain a bit of oil out into here and see how that looks. And then we'll take things from there. All right guys, so like I said, we're underneath the truck. I got a drain pan there. We're gonna pull this drain, drain plug and see what the oil looks like in this engine. But everything under here looks brand new, like even the, suspension the bushings and everything look brand new and the u-bolts no rust on them somebody spent a lot of money on this thing i kind of feel like i got a steal of a deal on it but let's pull this drain plug it is cold out today too about minus eight celsius so if we do get this thing running it'll be a cold start video too but your oil. I don't see any water in there. I'm just gonna put that plug in. I don't want to drain it all out. It's pretty thick, but that's because it's minus eight degrees Celsius. But I didn't see any water in over there, so that's a good sign. So I'm gonna tighten that plug back up. If you look in this drain pan, it's pretty thick oil, but it is, uh, I don't see any water in there, so that's a good sign. Okay, so now that we know there doesn't appear to be water in the oil, next step is gonna see if we're getting fuel at the carburetor and if the engine cranks over. So I'm going to put this new fresh battery in and disconnect that fuel hose at the carburetor and put it in like a pop bottle or something. And then we'll kill two birds with one stone. I'll just hit the key, see if it cranks over and then see if we're getting fuel um, from that fuel hose into the pop bottle. Um, I'll hop under the truck for a second and show you what they've done with the fuel pump. You see back there right there 
is the, the factory fuel line coming up. Um, because this was originally a TBI truck, it did have an in-tank fuel pump. So it had a fuel supply and a return line. So, but they've got the return line disconnected down by the frame down there. Um, and I'll show you, they've put a little inline pump. So I'm guessing they've got the in-tank pump disconnected and they're just using a inline fuel pump because this carburetor is only gonna need probably five pounds of fuel pressure. So I'll hop under the truck for a second, show you that fuel pump. So here we are under the truck. This is the new fuel pump they've put in. It's got wiring going to it, which I assume used to go to the uh, in-tank pump. Um, so that's in the supply line. They've got a fuel filter up there and further up. I don't feel like moving over there, but they've got the return line is just capped off there. So, so like I said, we'll pull that fuel line, put it in a pot bottle, put a new battery in. This battery is stone cold dead, got 0.0, .0 volts on it. So put this new one in and then see if things crank over. And obviously it's not gonna start or even attempt to fire because there's no distributor cap and no plug wires. And still got this one spark plug out here, but that's what we'll do now. All right, guys, here's my first indication that there's some wiring issues with this truck. I've got the new battery put in there. And when I touch the positive terminal, you can hear something clicking down by the starter. And something's drawing a fair bit of current. You can see it spark there pretty good. So I'm thinking something's not wired right because the key's not even in the truck. And it doesn't sound like the starter is attempting to crank, but I think that solenoid or the Bendix or whatever you want to call it seems to be trying to pull in. So. We may have some wiring issues that we need to figure out before we can uh, attempt to crank this thing over. All right, guys, I ended up having to take a break from this project for a couple days and step away to do other things, but I'm back at her now. And in the meantime, I've done some research and printed some wiring diagrams and stuff. And uh, out here having another look at the Suburban and discovering numerous problems. Um, which I will go through with the wiring diagram here shortly. And also uh, discovering that uh, despite me being all excited about finding clean oil in the oil pan, that this engine is actually seized up. I've tried breaking it loose uh, with a pry bar on the, uh, the flex plate, just kind of prying against the starter snout. And also tried putting a 5 8 socket on the bolt that on the front of the crankshaft that holds the harmonic balancer in and can't get it to uh, rotate that way either if if i turn it in the counterclockwise direction the bolt just backs out and i don't want to put too much torque on it in the clockwise tightening direction because i'm afraid i'll either snap that bolt or uh, um, strip out the threads so we're gonna try and, uh, I'd still like to try and free this engine up. It makes sense to me to try and unseize it while it's still bolted in the frame. I thought crossed my mind to just pull it out and uh, drop the six liter LS engine in, but I think while this uh, engine is still bolted between the frame rails, now would be a good time to try and break it free. So, um, but first let me flip the, the camera around and I'll show you some of these wiring issues I've found. And that just kind of adds evidence to the, uh, th the theory I have that this engine hasn't even ran. It's basically a brand new 18 year old crate engine that uh, is in the middle of being swapped in but wasn't completed and uh, unfortunately now is seized up. But we're gonna see if we can save it. So I should have looked at this wiring more closely before I just dropped a battery in. I'm taking the battery out now and put it on the battery tender back at the garage. And I'm climbing around in here. I busted the coolant reservoir because it's all cold and plastic super brittle from being old, but that's minor. Um, but anyways, there's all kinds of wiring issues here. If we look at this wiring diagram, like from the negative post of the battery, there's a small wire that goes to the sheet metal ground. 
That part's okay. That wire's right there. But the, the big wire coming from the negative should go to the engine block. And if you follow the big wire from the negative post, it actually goes to the alternator. That's the post that should charge up your battery when the alternator is turning. So uh, that's wrong. The wire that should actually be going to that post on the alternator is this smaller wire from the positive terminal. And that goes directly to the starter solenoid. That's why when I had that battery in before and I touched the this terminal to the starter terminal, that starter solenoid would kick in right away. And then what I didn't notice was the big positive cable, which should go right to the starter, I believe. Yeah, that actually comes around and is dead ended over here. That must be a piece of the old starter that it's still bolted to. So luckily that wasn't shorting out against metal or anything when I uh, had it hooked up to the battery. And then the wire that should be going to the star starter solenoid is this blue wire right here. So um, there's all kinds of wiring issues. So again, that uh, leads me to believe that this engine has probably never ran. Unfortunately, now it is seized up. So to work on the seizing issue, I think what I'm gonna do um, is take this serpentine belt off, take this fan off, take that pulley on the front of the crankshaft off and build some kind of uh, steel handle type of thing that will bolt to the the holes where the crankshaft pulley bolts into the harmonic balancer just so i can put kind of a steel handle on that uh, harmonic balancer and try and break the engine loose um, without uh, putting torque on that bolt that holds the balancer on um, another uh, issue that i'm realizing um, if there is any water in this engine, it uh, being that I'm working on it in well below freezing temperatures, that water is not gonna be liquid. So when I pulled the drain plug and drained some oil out, if there was water at the bottom of the oil pan, it's gonna be frozen and uh, wouldn't have drained out anyways. And I think obviously there is water in the engine or it wouldn't be seized, but I think most of that water must be sitting above the pistons and the rings. So we may even end up having to pull the heads and inspect the, the cylinders and stuff. But I'd almost like to, uh, I've got a little propane heater, almost like to try and warm up the engine block a bit. So if there is any water that's frozen solid in there that it'll thaw out but I'll think about that but for now we'll get this serpentine belt ripped off this fan off and get this pulley off and try and uh, come up with some sort of handle to um, turn the engine over I think I'm gonna pull the, the spark plugs and stuff out as well to uh, that, that'll uh, not make any compression or whatever that'll resist the engine turning over so we'll work on that now all right guys so we're underneath the truck i've got that serpentine belt pulled off crank pulley pulled off i'm just going to measure the distance between these holes here and build some kind of metal bar that bolts into there it's going to have to be offset a little bit because of this lip in the k member or cross member here so uh, it's gonna have to come out with some spacers and then come down and then I'll make it about a couple feet long as long as a breaker bar. And uh, then we should be able to, I'll put that bolt back in that holds the harmonic balancer on. I just took it out to make it easier to get a measurement between the bolt holes there. Put that back in to hold the balancer on and uh, then we'll have a nice long steel handle that we can kind of try and rock the crank back and forth and get this thing unseized hopefully. Got a little heater uh, 
going on here too that uh, right now it's just keeping me warm but when we go to break loose the engine I'll put it up under the oil pan there and get some tarps or old blankets or something to try and keep some heat in the engine and look at that exhaust this guy must have spent a lot of money like it's like a full custom exhaust the only thing is it's not mandrel bent, so on the bends it's kind of kinked in a little bit, but real nice job on the exhaust. It's almost going to be a shame to, when we swap that LS in, maybe we can use the back part of it, but um, it's a shame to uh, get rid of all this time and effort and work that the previous owner had put into it. And unfortunately, uh, He's dealing with some illness, so that's kind of why this thing sat neglected with uh, the hood off and stuff, is he was unable to come and uh, look after it. So we'll try and get her fixed up. And I see that back tire is going flat again, so I'll have to bring a compressor out here next time. But anyways, we're gonna go back and uh, build some kind of handle to uh, bolt to the harmonic balancer here. All right, guys, it is yet another day at the storage yard here. Uh, I went back to the shop and made a tool. It's laying on the front bumper there. I'll show you that in a little more detail. We got a few other odds and ends I'll show you, but did a bit more research on this uh, tag that I found that comes with this engine. I just Googled that where it says 383 Chevy bullet stroker. I couldn't find anything on that uh, catalog number or anything but the only company I could see that makes a 383 bullet stroker is uh, Blueprint Engines. So I don't know if this is a Blueprint engine. Um, if it is, they're known, they've got a good reputation for uh, being a top-notch uh, crate engine. And uh, uh, if you were to buy one of, the, one of their uh, 383 bullet stroker engines today, that would cost about 7,000 bucks US. So, um, but as you can see, this one was, uh, is from back in 2002, so 18 years ago. Um, so, uh, but I'm thinking it was a pretty good, uh, good crate engine back in its day. So now let's go have a look at uh, what the plan is for today. Like I said, I have made this tool like I talked about earlier, the last time I was out here, basically um, took uh, about a two foot long, inch and a quarter steel tube. Um, the holes in it are just over two and three quarter inches apart, like a 32nd of an inch more than two and three quarters. I'm not very good with fractions, so I don't know how to say that number, but, and then, cut another short little chunk of this inch and a quarter tube to space it out from the lip in the uh, the K member there. A um, couple other things I brought today. Brought our little heater back. It's a lot warmer day today. It's actually above freezing. It's like two degrees Celsius. So that's probably like 35 degrees Fahrenheit or something. And bought a, brought a sleeping bag. So I'm gonna try and set this heater up kind of try and aim it at the oil pan or engine block and then try and rig up the sleeping bag to uh, kind of keep the wind away from it you can see it's a little from those tags dangling on the sleeping bag it's a little breezy today but try and insulate it a bit with that sleeping bag um, the other thing i brought was i picked up one of these inspection cameras from canadian tire it was on sale so got a pretty good deal on it so I'm gonna pull the uh, spark plugs out of the spark plug holes, have a look at, um, at the cylinders internally with this camera, hopefully that works okay. And then we got the old uh, Seafoam Deep Creep and PB Blaster. If we do find a cylinder that has a bunch of rust or something in it, uh, we will spray that down in there and uh, let it sit for a while. So first thing I'm gonna do is get this heater rigged up. Um, get some heat on the uh, bottom end of the engine and then we're gonna pull the spark plugs out and Have a look inside the engine Okay, we're under the truck here. I've got that heater 
set up so it's uh, aiming right at the oil pan um, before you guys call me out on it don't do this at home um, these propane heaters have an anti-tip valve so that heater wouldn't stay lit with the valve um, or with the heater tilted over like it is so put a zip tie to hold the safety button down in but because uh, we're in like an open area, basically the danger in that is if the wind blows this heater out, it's gonna be pumping raw propane into the atmosphere. So I definitely wouldn't do this if I was in a garage or enclosed area, but because we're out in the, the wide open elements and there's a breeze and there's um, not much risk of propane accumulating and causing an explosion uh, and I'm going to check this heater regularly to make sure it hasn't gone out but it's already getting oil pans nice and warm all right guys I've got the plugs out and I think we found our problem cylinder um, these are the plugs from the front like cylinder two four six eight and you can see how two four and six are all nice and white and clean like brand new and uh, number eight is yellow that is the back one on the passenger side when i pulled that plug out of course being a small block chevy with block hug hugger headers it's a huge pain to pull the spark plugs so i was down underneath the truck as soon as i pulled that one out water ran out of the cylinder and of course i was laying right beneath it and water ran into my eyeballs and that was pleasant but so i think from looking at the plugs anyways and from the fact that water ran out of that number eight there must be a ton of water in that number eight cylinder but plugs on the other side all look brand new but now we'll uh take out this inspection camera and yeah first hole we're gonna look at is that number eight one on the passenger side rear but we'll uh, stick it in all the cylinders here and see what we can see as far as rust and damage and that kind of thing. All right guys, so I've got that inspection camera inserted into the uh, number eight cylinder there. You can see that black, this cable thing that's hooked up to the camera, but it's not, as it is, it's not as useful that's what I'm seeing on this camera right now. And to be honest, let me just move it around here. Like I can't see, I can't really change much of the view. And I don't, I was hoping I'd see like the top of the piston and where the piston meets the cylinder. I'm just trying to maneuver it around here and see something different, but. I don't even really know what I'm looking at. That must be the gap where the head meets the block or something. But anyways, there is a little mirror that I can put on the end of this to try and uh, like get a view off to the side. I might try put that on or I might uh, try some different cylinders here. But as of right now, this isn't, isn't telling me much. Don't know what I'm looking at, so. I'll uh, try a couple other things here, and if I can get a better view, I'll fire up the camera again. So I did put this little mirror on the end of the inspection camera, but unfortunately it is too big to fit into the spark plug hole, so. I think we'll basically give up on that uh, inspecting the cylinders and pistons with this camera and uh, we'll go put our uh, breaker tool on the front of the uh, harmonic balance there balancer and see if we can uh, get any movement out of the crankshaft oh one more thing before we put that tool on in that number eight hole i'm gonna spray a bunch of this uh, deep creep and PB blaster in there and so it uh, starts soaking.
Okay, I'm running into a couple issues here. One, I don't know if you guys can hear that. But I think I'm actually starting to like boil the oil in the oil pan. So I'm gonna shut off this heater, take it away from there. And then the other issue I have with my uh, breaker bar, you can see I've kind of got it, uh, tried to attach it to the uh, harmonic balancer there, but because the bolt heads on the crank pulley were half inch, I assumed that the threads in the balancer here were uh, 5 16 but they must be uh, 3 8 because these bolts will fit in the hole, but uh, they won't, uh, they're one size too small. But I can actually, I don't want to put too much torque on it because um, I don't want to mangle those threads with the bolts not being in properly, but I can actually move the engine a bit so it's not seized solid and the other thing i noticed i don't know let me just try clean the camera here is that any better i think it is when i turn it won't turn it goes a bit that way and then when i do that water starts running out of the uh oh and it's running all over my propane so there's obviously water in that back number seven cylinder as well. So I can turn it back and forth a bit and then it binds up and water comes out of that cylinder, like I said. So I'm gonna go to the hardware store and get the proper sized bolts. I'll have to drill out the holes in my uh, breaker tool here. And then while I'm doing that, I'm gonna spray some more PB blaster in those rear cylinders and that seafoam deep creep. And then we'll come back, get this thing uh, fastened on properly so we can put some torque on it and see if we can get this thing to uh, turn through a full rotation. Cause right now it kind of stops. Right about there, it stops fairly solid. So. All right, so I went out and got some 3 8 hardware for my uh, breaker tool here. So we're gonna get that bolted up to the harmonic balancer. And I'm just gonna keep rocking that tool back and forth and keep spraying uh, PB blaster and that seafoam deep creep into the cylinders and see if we can uh, get a little more range of motion out of the uh, the crankshaft there. All right, here is a view of that breaker bar bolted to the harmonic balancer with the 3 8 bolts. And I'm not gonna do too much with the camera here because I need two hands, but basically I'm just gonna work it back and forth like that. Put more, uh, penetrating fluid in the cylinders. Uh, let me just go get a different angle here. I ended up not using those spacers in there. I just left this gap to clear this cross member here with the spacers in. I was having trouble getting the bolts threaded in, but it seems to work like this. I can pull it back and forth here. So we're just gonna keep working it like that and see if we can get this crankshaft to go all the way around. All right guys, I've had some success. It's a little windy here, so hopefully you guys can hear me okay. But using my tool there, I have been able to uh, rotate the crankshaft a couple of full rotations. So I think I am ready to, well, I think what I need to do is get this wiring mess that I was talking about earlier, get that sorted out and then before I go home for the day, I'm hoping I'll be able to get this thing cranking over uh, with the actual starter in the truck. But judging from the uh, electrical mess here, I'm not sure if that's actually going to happen, but I would uh, kind of like to see that. So I'm going to try to get this wiring sorted out here, and then we'll see if she can crank with the starter while we've still got the plugs and everything out. The other thing I just noticed here just occurred to me. This is an aluminum headed uh, 
angled plug engine. So definitely isn't some, uh, just a run of the mill Chevy small block. It's definitely like a performance type engine. So that's kind of cool. So I got the wiring fixed up here. I got uh, the negative big battery cable. I'm just going to this bracket on the alternator, which is bolted to the engine block. Um, the little wire connected to the positive is going to this wire on the alternator. And there's another little blue, blue wire hooked up to it that I don't have the right terminal, but uh, I've just got it kind of wedged under that screw for now. Um, what else? The big wire on the positive is going to the starter. And I've got the right wire going to that starter solenoid terminal. But unfortunately, it uh, doesn't crank over. So I think there might be an issue with that starter. And I think it might have got cooked by uh, me leaving the battery hooked up to it. And so it was pulling in that starter solenoid for, you know, normally it should only be pulled in for a few seconds. and. It was probably like that for quite some time. So I'm thinking that starter might be cooked. I did when I was cranking it, I pulled out my voltmeter and verified that I've got 12 point some volts um, going to the starter and that solenoid terminal. So it should be trying to turn over, but it's not. So I think we're gonna rip out that starter. Um, basically it's starting to come to the end of the day here but rip out that starter and debating ripping that carburetor off it's obviously going to need some cleaning up and stuff um, but I think for now we'll uh, rip that starter out and see if we can find a replacement but at least we're making progress at least now the thing the crankshaft turns over anyways by hand um, and hopefully uh, a new starter will help get it cranking over with the starter all right guys I ended up ripping the starter out and I just have it wired up right to the battery here to test it out and I figured out that it's this solenoid here that's buggered because if I shore it out with a screwdriver you can I'm not going to do it with one hand here because I'm holding the camera and the starter jumps all over. But you can see the marks on there. If I jump for a screwdriver from there to there, the starter spins over. But if I jump for it from there to there, which is the terminal that uh, when you turn the key, that one gets energized. And it should put power to here to get the starter to spin over. And it should also energize this solenoid, which causes your Bendix gear to jump over and engage with the ring gear. So that part's not happening. So um, I'm going to disconnect it from the battery and pull the solenoid off. And hopefully we can find one at a local parts store. All right, guys, we are back at the storage yard on yet another day. You can see it has snowed a bit and it's gotten cold again. It's probably minus seven or eight and today I have brought out a starter solenoid so we're gonna try uh, replace that there's the new starter solenoid with the spring and everything so we'll get that thrown in there and then throw the starter in I'll probably put the heater back under the oil pan again to warm things up and then see if this thing will actually crank over. All right, guys, we've got that new starter solenoid installed. So we're gonna throw the starter uh, back into the truck and connect up the wiring and see if we can get this thing to crank over. All right, guys, you can't see it, but we've got the starter back in and wired. Batteries back in with the cables hooked up. So we are going to hop in the truck, see if this thing cranks over pretty frosty and here we go let's try to crank this unit over oh, making some kind of weird noise but 
and our engine cranks. Not sure what that other noise is. Some relay or something chattering, but we'll have to figure that out. But at least our engine cranks now. I see our fuel gauge is stuck past full, so we'll have to do some figuring out with the gauges, but might have to do with the uh, fuel pump they changed out. Maybe the sending unit isn't hooked up or something. But Anyways, we at least have it cranking over with the starter. So that's a, we're making progress. All right, guys, we are back for another day of working on the Suburban. Seems like this, uh, getting this thing running has been going on forever. It's been a couple of weeks I've been working on this thing off and on now, but uh, getting close. When we last left this thing, we had it cranking over on the starter, but unfortunately I wasn't that smart and it snowed a bunch and I should have uh, should have covered up the engine, but I didn't. And uh, so now there's a bunch of snow sitting on top of there, but I'll try to get that cleaned off the best I can. So what we got to work on now, let me flip the camera around here. Yeah, there you can see my snow covered engine. I should have put a, some kind of cover over top of that. So I'm gonna heat up the oil again, put my heater under the oil pan. I did bring some fresh oil. We'll probably do an oil change on it just in case there's there's probably a bunch of rust and stuff in the engine. We, we need to uh, make sure the fuel pump is operating, getting fuel to the carburetor. We gotta put the distributor together and make sure it's timed properly. Um, gotta get the carburetor at least unseized kind of it's uh i don't really want to tear it apart right now because i don't have a gasket set for it so if any of the gaskets like tear or get damaged during disassembly i uh, won't be able to put it back together then we got to put the uh um, crank pulley and serpentine belt uh assembly on the front of the engine um and get some coolant into it. I see the lower radiator hose is missing. Um, upper one is there, but has no hose clamps or anything on it. So have to get some coolant into the, uh, into the block as well. And so once we have fuel pump running, so fuel to the carburetor, distributor in, that'll give a spark. Um, we'll put some clean oil in. I've got, I'm just going to use the cheapest 5W20 oil that I could find at Canadian Tire. It's on sale right now because um, I want oil that's thin because it's cold out. It's like minus 13 today. So thin oil will pump through the engine quicker. And uh, I'm also going to change the oil fairly quickly or fairly often for the first, uh, if we do get this thing going, um, just to get any because it's probably all full of rust and water and garbage still so we'll want to change the oil fairly often for the first little bit to get that crap flushed out of there so i think first thing we'll do get that heater under the engine get the snow cleaned off it and i'm going to work on getting that fuel pump running and getting fuel to the carburetor all right i seem to be having some fuel pump issues i disconnected this uh three eighths line that comes from the fuel pump goes to the carburetor and suck it in a jerry can and turn the key on i can't hear the fuel pump at all but i've figured out this is the fuel pump relay on the firewall right here and as a side note what kind of annoys me is they sprayed basically everything under the hood of this truck with like that bed liner stuff so makes it really hard to see what color the wires are. You gotta like go back in the harness and peel some stuff off and then you can see the colors. But anyways, um, I determined that this center pin in this fuel pump relay connector is the one that sends power to the fuel pump. So I took, this was the wire that goes to the electric choke. So it's got 12 volt power when the key is on. And if I touch that, there you can hear the fuel pump running. 
but you can hear a bit of gurgling or something but there's actually no gas coming out of the line so I think that pump might need to be primed or something but one way or another I'm not getting fuel to the carburetor so I gotta get that figured out all right guys so I'm underneath the truck here I disconnected the outlet hose from this little electric fuel pump it was mounted up in the fuel rail here and I thought maybe I could prime it by like sucking on this uh, hose of course that was dangerous because you could get a mouthful of gas but um, it felt like I was basically just sucking air and then I tried blowing into this hose and it should have felt like you know blowing a straw into a glass of water you should feel some resistance and like bubbling and it just felt like I was blowing into air so I think it's possible I may not have enough fuel in the fuel tank there I did put about two gallons in but I'm thinking maybe that uh, pickup tube for the fuel pump doesn't go all the way to the bottom of the tank and uh, so I'm gonna try fill up like a five gallon jerry can and dump another five gallons in there and see if we can get this fuel pump to prime with a bit more gas in the tank all right guys running into more issues here i dumped another five gallons of fuel into the tank there and i still wasn't getting any uh fuel at the carburetor here so i think for now just to uh see if this thing will fire i just hooked up this uh, chunk of fuel hose and put a little funnel there and if I dump gas in there it should fill up the float bowl in the carburetor and should basically it should should run for as long as I keep dumping fuel into that funnel to keep the float bowl full um, it should work so I think now I'm gonna focus on getting that distributor back together and I already noticed a couple issues with it I'm pretty sure that vacuum advance canister there is supposed to be pointing out this way and then the hose and this might be kind of hard to see but the hose that's hooked up to the vacuum advance canister got pinched uh, I don't know if let me try move this these wires out of the way here but anyways there you can see right down there the vacuum hose for the to advance the distributor stuck when they did the engine swap it must have fallen down in between the uh, bell housing and the engine and got pinched in there it doesn't look like it's causing any alignment issues or anything so I'm probably just gonna cut it off there but more evidence that this engine is basically never been run just swapped in here and the swap never got finished but anyways uh so i think i'm gonna pull that distributor out flip it around so the vacuum advance canister is facing this way and then we got to uh figure out if it's timed right all right guys we are back at it for another day i think today what we're gonna start out with i'm gonna pull that distributor out um last, last day i just set the cap on top of it just to basically make sure it was gonna fit and stuff but uh i think i'm gonna flip that distributor around so the vacuum canister is pointing this way like i've seen it on all the other small block chevys i've seen and since we're gonna have the distributor out anyways, I think I'm gonna pull that uh, far side valve cover and just bring that number one cylinder to top dead center. And that way when we drop the new the distributor back in, we can make sure it's timed um, in the ballpark for uh, basically we'll have the number one cylinder at top dead center and um, we'll make sure the rotor is pointing in the general area of the number one p 
post on the distributor cap. So that's what we'll do now, pull that distributor out and then pull the valve cover and uh, get this engine cranked over to uh, top dead center on number one. Okay, so we got that distributor pulled out of there. Uh, now, like I said, we're gonna pull off this passenger side valve cover and that'll do two things. It'll let us uh, inspect the, the valve train and see how rusty things are inside that valve cover. And it'll let us uh, see when we're on the uh, compression stroke on that number one cylinder. So we'll watch when that intake valve opens up. That'll tell us when we're on the intake stroke. And then when that intake valve closes, we'll be on the compression stroke. And we'll have to rotate the engine around probably another third of a turn or so to get to top dead center. And that's when we'll line up our rotor on the distributor. So we'll get that valve cover pulled off now and see how that looks inside. All right, guys, so I got the valve cover off and this pretty much confirms that this engine is a fairly high dollar crate engine and has never even been started. Check this out. It's got fancy roller rockers, like I mentioned before, aluminum heads, and no signs at all of the engine having been run. Like if it had been run there, there would be at least a little bit of dirt in there and you know, signs of oil and wear and tear and stuff. But basically there's a little bit of condensation in there. You can see, I've got that heater on underneath the engine there so it's there's a bit of steam and stuff coming out of there but basically this is a pretty expensive crate engine that has never been run so um, like i said before we're gonna crank the engine over i'm gonna hook up i've got one of them remote start crank things that'll hook up to the starter and basically we're gonna crank it around this is the intake valve on your number one cylinder. This is the exhaust valve. So we'll crank it until we see the intake valve open and close. And then we'll go, like I said, another third of a turn more. Can't see the balancer down there real well, but then we'll bring it around till it's at top dead center. So uh, we'll do that now. Hook up our starter button and crank her around. All right guys, so here is that remote starter switch, they call it. It's basically got a trigger there that uh, when you pull it, you can crank over the engine without having to turn the key and you can be under the under the hood watching things. So it's got a couple of uh, alligator clips connected to wires there. I'll just show you on this old starter solenoid. One hooks up to your main, uh, this is where your big battery terminal hooks up on your starter solenoid. So one clip will go to there and the other one goes to this S terminal where uh, your start signal to crank the starter hooks up to. So we'll hook those two clips up to there on the starter that's actually connected to the engine. And then we should be able to crank it over using this uh, trigger here. All right, guys, I got that uh, starter trigger hooked up. And if you look at it from this angle, you can still see the assembly grease where the push rods meet the rocker arms so right up in there and there's some dripping out there so yeah I'm convinced this engine has never fired before so anyways uh, now like I said I'll pull this trigger and crank the engine over and we'll watch that um, intake valve on the number one cylinder there you can see the exhaust valve is opening exhaust valve is closed intake valve is starting to open intake valve is closed now we'll go around i can't see my timing mark from this angle so i'm gonna hop around to the other side of the truck again and I may have to use my uh, tool that bolts into the balancer there to basically I want to get the, the zero mark lined right up indicating that that unit will be at top dead center. Okay guys let me get in there you can see there I've got the timing mark lined up the zero mark can't see the reading on that 
try to get this thing to focus where I want it. On that pointer there, but I think it's, yeah, that third point up is the zero indicator. So I've got that lined up and you can see, I use that bar again, but I just put two bolts into the balancer and got it close with my uh, trigger there electrically. And then I just, I had gone a little bit too far. So I put that bar and took it back till the zero mark on the balancer is lined up with what I think is the zero mark on that pointer. So now we can drop this distributor in. So I got the cap off again. So basically we're gonna drop it in with this vacuum canister pointing, oh, let's say, pointing at like your number six cylinder or pretty close to where this PCV valve is or passenger uh, tire, some guys say. So the vacuum advance canister is gonna be pointing this way. And then the rotor, we want pointing at the number one cylinder. So the one we were looking at earlier. So basically we're gonna drop it in something like this. So we'll drop that in now. I'll have to put the camera down, but fire it up again here shortly. Just one other thing I wanted to point out quick here before we drop this distributor in. You can see that little tab in the bottom of the shaft. That has to mate up with the shaft that drives the oil pump. So there's a slim chance that when we drop it in, that'll actually mesh up. So, but I just wanted to point that out because I might be mentioning it again later. Okay, guys, so... Got that distributor dropped in there as far as it'll go right now. Like I mentioned before, that oil pump drive tang isn't engaged, so it didn't drop down all the way. I'll show you guys a better view from the side, but just wanted to show you guys a view from the top here. So like I said, that vacuum advance canister is pointed at my number six cylinder and rotor is pointed uh, it's actually pointed at about the number two cylinder, but if I moved it one tooth over on the cam gear, it was way out of whack. So pointed in the ballpark of the number one cylinder. So now we're going to I'll hop over to the side view and we'll crank the engine with the little trigger thing again. And then we should be able to see the distributor drop down in as that oil shaft, oil pump drive shaft engages with the little tang that I showed you guys in the bottom of the distributor. And here's the side view. You can see the gap right there. There's probably about a three eighths of an inch that the distributor needs to drop down yet. So I'm gonna hang on to this hose here. And then I'm just gonna try crank this uh, trigger thing and see if that uh, should drop down in there. And there it goes, that didn't take much. So now it's dropped down in there. Now we can put our uh, distributor hold down bolt back in there and put the cap on and start rooting, routing. How do you say it? Rooting, routing. Running the wires, spark plug wires. I'll have to look up the firing order for a small block Chevy again. One eight, something, something, something. But uh, I have to get the wires on the cap in the right order. Put that other valve cover back on. And we'll dump some fuel in my uh, funnel here. That carburetor looks pretty crusty, so. I have, I think that carburetor is going to need to be gone through, but I'd like to at least hear this thing fire. And obviously we won't want to run it for more than a couple seconds if it does fire because we've got no coolant in the engine right now, but I just want to see if we can hear this thing fire. Okay, so we got our distributor cap back on. So that's going to be our number one cylinder right there. So uh, I've got that valve cover back on. Don't have it tightened down yet, but so it'll be our number one. So if I hop back over the tailgate of my truck, 
got all my plug wires arranged in order here so longest one is gonna have to go to the number two cylinder but the second longest one should work for the number one so i'll pull up uh firing order on my uh my phone here and we'll uh, get all these plug wires uh, ran to where they need to go okay you can see i've got the number one plug wire hooked up there so i'm going to come over here and put in the spark plug for the number one cylinder and hook up the plug wire but before i do that in each cylinder i'm going to spray one more good dose of this sea foam deep creep just to give the engine some lubrication when we first go to crank it over with the spark plugs in. So I'm gonna spray that in the plug hole, put the spark plug in, and then move on to the next pin over will be the number eight cylinder. Run that plug wire to number eight, spray some sea foam in there, put the plug in, and keep working my way around. But that way I won't, uh, I thought about just putting all the plug wires on, but this will reduce the chance of uh, me crossing up any of the wires or anything. So that's what we'll do now. All right, guys, we've got all our plug wires on, spark plugs in. I'll neaten those up later. I've just got a kind of strung free air for now. But I did notice when I was climbing around up here, if I look in the carburetor, if I open up the secondaries, there is water sitting in the bottom of the carburetor, so um, I think I'm going to have to, I don't know if you guys can even see that in there, but yeah, there I shake it, you can see the water moving around. So I'm going to pull that carburetor off, at least turn it upside down and dump the water out and make sure all the shafts rotate and stuff. and. Then we'll uh, put her back on and see if we can get this thing to fire. All right, guys, so I did end up taking the carburetor off and split it apart, cleaned out the float bowl as best I could. Um, this choke plate shaft was seized up, so I got that freed up with some WD-40. And now all the linkages and everything are working. So still an old crappy carb that's been sitting outside for who knows how many years but we'll throw it back on and dump some fuel in her and i think we'll see if we can get this thing to fire and one other thing i'm going to leave the pcv disconnected and the vacuum advance disconnected so i just put some of these little vacuum caps over those ports so we don't have a vacuum leak now we'll throw this carb back on all right guys i got the carb back on i plugged there's one more uh vacuum port there that would go to my uh, transmission vacuum modulator and I got some fuel in my funnel here going to the float bowls on the carburetor so I think I am ready to try fire this thing up first start ever on this 18 year old crate engine let's give it a try and just to cheat a little bit, I'm going to spray some ether down the carburetor here just to try and get her to fire quicker. So spray a couple shots down the carb and then we'll hop in the truck and crank her over. And here we go, cranking this thing over. And as you can hear, we got no fire. I'm just going to try advance the timing a bit on that distributor hop out here did have it fairly retarded you can even see that these days so i'm just gonna give her i should have brought a timing light but i just gave her a little twist there to give her a few more degrees of advance Let's try that weird that I had no, it's almost like I had no spark whatsoever. <laughs> Try again here. No, not getting any fire whatsoever. All 
All right, guys, so I think my issue was it was flooding out or basically this electric choke isn't working. So that choke plate was completely closed. So I took off my PCV hose and wedged it in there to keep the, the choke plate open. And now I got it to fire. So let me hop around here and hopefully it does it, does it again here. Awesome. Uh, like I said, we don't have coolant in the block right now, so I don't want to run it for any longer than that, but she's gonna run, boys. All right, guys, I'm pretty happy about that. This thing actually fired and ran. So we're gonna wrap this one up. Good way to end the year. It's New Year's Eve 2020. Good way to end a crappy year. I hope you guys have a, all have a good new year, and I hope 2021 brings a bit of i don't know i don't even know what to say you guys know what a mess 2020 was for the whole world so i hope 2021 uh brings us back to normal a little bit but anyways uh next time we're gonna put coolant in this thing i'll bring a timing light get the timing dialed in and then uh, i've got 30 days i put insurance on this thing already so i've got to go get an insurance inspection on it but ending the year on a high note ending this video on a high note thanks for watching i appreciate your guys support we just passed 5,000 subscribers and half a million views on the channel so you guys have a happy new year and we'll talk to you on the next one bye for now